Hello. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the horizontal line test. So if you remember, uh, we've discussed in the past the vertical line test, right? So um, to use a quick reminder, we have some generic curve. Go to my nice little go-to curve here. Uh, we discussed how we would, in order to know if a, if a relation was a function, right, and we were sort of looking at x versus y, and we said to know whether it was a function, we needed that each input had exactly one output. You didn't have a situation where an input had multiple outputs, right? And so one of the ways we did that would be to sort of look at a specific output, some value, and then look at all possible outputs. Wow, missed my mark entirely. <laughs> some input. <laughs> There we go, perfect. <laughs> this is why I'm not an artist. <laughs> well, this and many other reasons. So the idea was is that we looked at sort of all possible outputs and, and we discovered that sort of if we, if we look at that geometrically, right, if we see what that looks like on a graph, it's really a vertical line, right? And so the vertical line test told us that we sort of wanted to go scanning left to right with a vertical line because what we're doing is we're checking all the inputs by going left to right and we're checking all of the associated outputs to that input by using the vertical line. If we hit the same spot, if we hit the graph with the same vertical line more than once, that tells us it couldn't be a function because that input had multiple outputs. So this was a function, right, versus, our state is a function, but whatever, is and was, <laughs> versus when we did the uh, oops. We did something like um, this, right? Or maybe I'll do this. Doesn't matter. But when we looked at this one, we picked uh, you know a certain input, and we looked at the line going through that input. We said, ah, this hit the graph in more than one place. So this, x and y, this is not a function. Okay, so this was the vertical line test. Now if you remember, um, the whole idea, right, of the vertical line test was to test if it was a function by doing this input versus output with a vertical line. And we chose vertical lines because what we were doing was, right, like, as I said a little bit ago, um, we did the input and we looked at all possible outputs. So now, let's say that we have a relation and we want to know, so I'm gonna be using this still, um, but this will be maybe the dialogue-y part. So want to know if the inverse relation where, again, the relation always exists, but we don't really care about the relation. We want to know if the inverse relation is actually a function. Because inverse relation isn't too helpful. We want inverse functions, right? And as we sort of discussed in the inverse uh, function video, the way we know that is if we can look at all of the outputs and find that they have a uh, unique input and vice versa, right? That one-to-one -one injective property. So, need, so we need F to be really bijective, But the surjective part doesn't really show up on graphs in um, a way that in this class we're going to be discussing much. Um, so really, geometrically, we can check injective. And we can check whether something is injective in the same way, the same idea, concept way, not literally the same way, as we did whether it was a function. Because remember, 
to check injective, what that means is that each output, each y value, has exactly one input, has exactly one x value. So before we want to check, right, for the function, the vertical line test, we were checking each input for one output, right? So we fixed the input, we checked all the outputs. Now we want to check each output to see how many inputs it has. And so we're going to do the same general approach where we're going to fix an input and look at all possible outputs, all the possible x values. And what we get is a horizontal line, right? So this gives rise to the horizontal line test. And it's horizontal line for the same reason that the vertical line test is a vertical line, because now instead of fixing an input and checking all the outputs, we're fixing an output and checking all the inputs, right? So if we're looking at, say, this graph, I do the same idea before I would go left to right, right, in order, right, because we're fixing the, the x value and checking all the y values and then sort of scanning with that. So here I'm doing the same idea. I'm going to fix the y value now and check all the x values scanning. So here, in fact, this passes the horizontal line test, which I'm just going to write as HLT, horizontal line test. So if this is some, um, so let me actually write some names for these things. Let's call this thing f of x and call this thing g of x. So here, so here g inverse of x is a function uh, by the horizontal line test. But g of x is not a function by the vertical line test, VLT. So it is possible to have a relation that is not a function, that would be this, where the inverse is a function. That, this is a perfect example. Similarly, in fact, I'll keep this color. Over here, if I fix some output and look at all of the inputs, I actually hit this thing three different places, right? So here, it fails the horizontal line test but passes the vertical line test. So here, let me go back to writing in this color, uh, f of x is a function by the vertical line test, VLT, but f inverse of x, which I'm going to put in quotes because I'm misusing this because we use this notation specifically to say something is a function, um, but I'm, I'm about to clarify, is not a function. by the horizontal line test, HLT. So this is sort of bad notation, but I really am talking about the inverse relation, trying to go the other way and saying, eh, this doesn't actually work because it's not actually a function by the horizontal line test, okay? So vertical line test, this tells you whether or not the original relation is a function. The horizontal line test tells you whether or not the inverse of that relation is a function. And it's possible to have one the other, both or neither of these tests succeed, right? So if they both work, then your, your original thing is a function and its inverse is a function. Um, so you could do something like, as a quick you know, two second sketch, um, you could look at something like this would be an example. So here, and I would encourage you to do it yourself, HLT and um, VLT both work. Here's an example where um, HLT, right, horizontal line test works, but the vertical line test doesn't. That one, the vertical line test works, the horizontal line test doesn't. Um, and then we could do another one where, uh, let's say, a circle. Here, uh, HLT, oops, H, 
BLT fails and BLT fails. Okay. Again, yeah, I would encourage you to check as well. Okay. All right. So that's really all there is to it with the horizontal line test. Um, the the biggest sort of hurdle students tend to have is confusing the horizontal line test with a vertical line test. Which one tells you which? Right. So vertical line test tells you if it's a function. Horizontal line test tells you if the inverse is a function. Okay. And that is that. <laughs>